When you take an individual child with an obvious facial birth defect, which makes you the point of a ridicule, of potential bullying, and loss of self-esteem, being able to help these children through that, I think is a wonderful thing. Kids used to bully me, uh, make fun of me, call me names. I feel sad, like really upset, because they just make me feel hurt. And I would tell my mom, and she would just tell me I just needed to ignore them. And I'd try, and they would just keep, they just keep making fun of me. He would get up in the morning and not even want to go to school. You would want to help him, but we had no way of helping him. You don't want to see your kid get upset? So if they could do something about it, then I was all for it. The idea that uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, uh, but names will never hurt me, really doesn't apply to these children. Uh, these words can be more painful and more damaging than actually physical abuse. If we can at least give them uh, a running chance at being the most that they can be, then I think we've accomplished a great deal. The point that that little baby face brings out is that plastic surgery is still at the forefront of trying to improve the lives of individuals, not just make them look better. The foundation came about because I had been going on kind of the routine pro bono trips that are designed to take care of children with cleft lips. I kept seeing children with other defects and kept wondering, why aren't we handling those defects? And I thought we would change the paradigm. We would take care of children uh, with all facial birth defects. And then at the same time, we would bring the children to New York, those physicians who would then volunteer, who could treat a gamut of deformities, uh, didn't have to leave their practices. Doc, he is this big, burly Texan who has been able to talk 24 other surgeons into being part of the Babyface Foundation, and he does it with such conviction and love, and, and how can they not want to be part of such a great organization? I am helping children who really need our services and will make a big difference in their lives in a very short period of time. How are you feeling? They're able to feel better about themselves, to form better relationships, and just to go along life without having to worry about these little things that other kids didn't yeah. have to worry about. They're so generous and they want to give back, uh, and this allows them to do that. We're going to be working on you like you're taking off on a rocket ship. So you're going to stick all kinds of leads on you and electrodes. We have the greatest technology in the United States. We do scans that just put into evidence every little aspect that this child needs to correct the deformities. It's a porous implant. I carve that, I shape that towards the other ear, and then I put that under a vascular pedicle, and I pull the pedicle down over this, and I bring in a blood supply. And that gives, and then I skin graft this. Many people are trying to learn how to do this procedure now. Now these are our complicated surgeries that take a lot of time and planning and follow-up care. And we do our best to have all the equipment that we use to be donated, again to decrease costs, so that more of each dollar donated is going to bring more and more kids over to have this type of surgery. These are new paradigms we're setting up. You have a dentist with a plastic surgeon, with an ENT, and once the child's under anesthesia, multiple procedures get done which optimize the surgical services. A very special group of doctors who perform medical miracles for free. Enter Dr. Thomas Romo. She is one of a group of dedicated doctors who comprise the medical team of the Little Babyface Foundation. There was a video from Good Morning America about a little girl that they helped. I just clicked it to see what it was about, and it led me to Little Babyface's foundation. It's very difficult to choose which patients uh, get operated on by Little Babyface Foundation surgeons. Uh, I don't make that decision alone as the medical advisory board uh, that together makes that determination, uh, but it's really based on the severity of the birth defect and the need of the patient. I was at work and she called and she said, hi Carla, this is Diane from the Babyface Foundation and I was just, I was in shock. They told me that I was chosen and I was really excited. This is a gift that I could never give my son. It's going to yeah. change him forever. Is it? Yeah. I'm a single mom and there was no way I could pay for surgery like this and to be able to come to New York and have little baby face bring us here and take care of him was amazing. We're a small foundation but the upside 
on this is that this process could be duplicated in every city across the United States. But we need uh, financing to bring the children and to develop the manpower so that we can help establish this. There is absolutely no greater cause that we have than to help our fellow human beings. And I think that uh, we start with our children. You take one child at a time. If it's a child from Nigeria or a child from Brooklyn, it doesn't matter. These kids, their lives are totally changed forever. You watch them when they go through these surgeries as they look in the mirror and they see themselves in a more positive light. You see them actually come out. And that's a very satisfying process. Thanks, Dr. Irma, for choosing me out of a lot of kids to come get my ears done. Thank you. Thank you to everybody, <laughs> the little baby face, and everyone here is so nice. Thank you very much to the Baby Face Foundation. It's going to change his life forever. Yeah. Forever. <laughs> I think he holds his head up higher, and he just seems so much more happy with himself. And he won't worry about that anymore. Kids are going to think I'm a different kid. Thank you, Dr. Schaefer and his assistant and all the doctors that helped me and especially the Baby Face Foundation.